California investors. Let's buy some real estate. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. Today I'm working with a man named JP. JP, you come to me because you're in Cali, and Cali's expensive. Like, super expensive, dude. Like, ridiculously expensive. Like, what does, like, what are those tents in Tent City going for? <laughs> Is Tent City even California? Is that Seattle? I don't even know. Is it San Francisco? It's one of those those crazy uh, liberal. Steve, help me out. Which one? Where is Tent City? It's one of the liberal areas. I think it's California. Is it Cal like they're all the same, right? Like you have like San Francisco, Seattle. Uh, wh which one did they they had Chad? Where was Chad? I think that was uh, was that Portland. Portland. I don't know. It's all the same, right? San Francisco, Seattle, Portland. It's all the same. It's it's crazy liberal world. It's crazy crazy land. And in all those areas, I think homeless people are allowed to live in tents in the public. And also those tents probably cost $500,000. It's totally ridiculous. So that's why somebody like you, JP, that's why you come here. You come talk to me because we have cash flow investment properties unlike anything you've seen. And guess what? Here in Ohio, we are a state that actually has reasonable landlord-tenant laws. So if you own a property, you actually... Uh, get to uh, experience some type of private property ownership rights. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not Arkansas. I think in Arkansas, if your tenant doesn't pay rent, you're allowed to shoot them. Uh, it's not that, but it's pretty it's pretty reasonable in my opinion. So uh, you came to me, JP. You got 22 grand, man. And uh, I just got done filming a video for you yesterday that was on a multifamily. I thought that multifamily would be perfect for you, except... It required you to stretch your funds a little bit, brother. Uh, you're trying to stay around the 80K range. That one I sent you was 100K. Uh, I thought that was a killer freaking deal. And if you can find a way to work it out, if you can scrape up the money, you should absolutely do that deal. However... If you can't, if you need to stay more in your budget, I got just the property for you. But first, a quick commercial break. Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> this Section A property right here, this is what I think the doctor ordered. I think this one is totally going to work out for you. Now, it's already got a Section 8 tenant in there. They are on month to month. And right here, big ticket item, okay? Updated electrical, right? Yeah, it's it's messy, okay? Like, yes, is there a freaking door in the middle of this person's dining room? You bet your ass there is. Uh, I don't know why that door is there. I don't know what's going on. Uh, is there a whole bunch of, like, cat food just, like, chilling on the floor? Yeah, yeah, there is, okay? Uh, this is what D&C grade investing typically looks like, right? It's not glamorous, but it's not horrendous, right? As far as big ticket items, your electric panel, as I told you, was upgraded. Uh, this furnace, probably 15, 20 years old. Hot water tank, somewhere in the 10-year range. Just so you know, these last about 30 years, cost 3 Gs. These last about 15 years, cost a G, right? That's to replace those. So uh, you'll factor those costs in in your capital expenditure budget, which we'll go over shortly, right? Uh, just a couple other shots, right? So is this thing uh, fancy? No, but Section 8 real estate investing, it never is fancy, okay? And by the way, the address, it's 2059 West 104th, Cleveland. Been on the market for 46 days, and the price is $79.9. Now, here's the thing. This is a long-term Section 8 tenant, right? They put this person in quite a while ago, and they're on a month-to-month -month lease, which is great. Because the market rent, because this is a four-bedroom, one-bathroom house, the market rent for this is $1,100, $13,200. Now, 
if they were already bringing in the market rent for Section 8, I don't think you'd have the opportunity to buy this for the price I think you could buy it. Right now, I want you to be able to pick this up at 70. If you pick it up at 70, I anticipate your fixed and variable expense estimates for the year to be just under 6,000, right? That's calculating saving for those big ticket items, right? Like I, I told you. Furnace, three Gs, hot water tank, a G, right? You probably got about a decade or so left on each of those, right? So every year I'm going to have you save $660 for those big ticket items. You're not going to spend that money. You're probably going to put that in your pocket now, but I don't want to fluff you and make you think that that's actualized returns because those big ticket items are coming, right? Roof is about seven Gs. They last 30 years. I have no reason to believe this is a brand new roof. So those costs are coming. So we calculate for those. And even calculating for those, if you picked it up at 70 k you'd only put down 17 and a half, and that would be a 26.2% return on your money. But, but remember, as I said, that'd be if... You got the market rent of 1100 I don't think it would sell for 70 k if it was already there, right? What has happened is the current seller has placed the tenant in this property years ago when the voucher amounts were lower. They're at 900 Now, Section 8 doesn't just call you on the phone like, hey, bruh, what's up? Guess what, man? We're the government. We want to give you some more fucking money. That's not how this works, right? I think you all know that. The only people that think the government's going to call you and give you money are liberal assholes. <laughs> oh! Damn, that was a good one. Zing. But if you're not a liberal asshole, you know the government's not going to come out and just try to hand you free money, right? And if you're not a liberal asshole, you know it's not really free money. It's just other people that have worked hard. It's actually their money. But, hey, that's, that's a show for another day, right? So you know the government's not coming back to you like, yo, dude, let's give you more money, right? So what you have to do is you have to go through the process with Section 8, uh, more specifically in this case, CMHA, that's uh, the housing authority that runs Section 8 in the Cleveland market, we would need to go file to get the rental rate increased. Is it an absolute guarantee that we get it to 1100 on the first shot? No, but there are no guarantees uh, when dealing with the, uh, the bureaucracy that is the government. But again, the pros, in my opinion, far outweigh the cons in a normal circumstance because as you get into C&D neighborhoods like this, the risk goes up, right? The biggest things we have to worry about are non-payment of rent and evictions, right? In my chart there, right, I have vacancy and non-payment of rent. Every year you're saving 660 Well, if we can keep a government-guaranteed tenant happy, keep them in your property for 10, 15 years, why are they going to move, right? The rent is free, you're going to save a lot of freaking money. In addition, right, your repairs and your maintenance, we're saving 660 for that, right? This is actual money that comes home to you, but I'm telling you eventually you're going to need to pay big bills, so you're going to take that back so you can't really consider it return, right? But if you can avoid those repairs and maintenance and you can avoid the vacancy and non-payment, dude, you're going to be making so much more money because repairs and maintenance, folks, a lot of people think that, like, as a property manager, you have, like, a lot of bills, like, a repair in January, February, March, April. That's not how it works. The majority of your repairs are going to come at a turnover. So if you can avoid turnovers, your return is going to be huge. So even if Section 8 didn't go all the way to 1100 which is what we typically see for properties like this with the four-bedroom vouchers, even if that doesn't happen, you're still beyond – well and above beyond the curve on this one with that government guaranteed tenant. So let me know if you'd like me to write up an offer because I think this one's a banger. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.